Hello, good day. So in this tutorial video, you will learn about set and subsets. But before that, let's have these learning outcomes first. So at the end of this video, you must able to define and discuss set and other related terms, represent sets using different methods. So you will learn also the different methods that can be used in order to represent sets differentiate the different types of sets so in this video you will also learn the different types of set and you must able to differentiate them all next is to identify the subsets of a given set and lastly is to distinguish the difference between subset and proper subset now let's have this we can always invent a set for instance a common house set may contain living room, kitchen, bedroom, and comfort room. And these four rooms will make up a set, and which is actually a house set. Another example, if we have carabao, cow, pig, and goat, these four animals will make up a set that contains animals with four legs. In mathematics, for instance, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. And these numbers will make up a set. And this is actually a set of even numbers. Now, based on the given examples above, set may be thought as a well-defined collection of objects. Now, what do we mean if we say well-defined collection of objects? The main characteristic of a set in mathematics is that it is well-defined. So, this means we must exactly know what are the elements of the sets. So, dapat alam natin yung mga elements ng set para masabi natin well-defined siya. Example, if we consider the set of odd numbers, alam natin yung odd numbers are not divisible by 2. And we know also that 3 is an element of this set because 3 is not divisible by 2. And 4 is not because 4 is an even number. And this set of odd numbers, we can think of specific elements or elements in this given set. For example, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. So we can think of elements. So therefore, the set of odd numbers is a well-defined set. On the other hand, the set of honest people is not well defined. We considered it so because honest is not defined, well defined. Bakit? Kasi magkakaiba tayo ng perspective tungkol sa mga honest people. Maaring yung honest na tao sa'yo ay hindi honest sa paningin ng iba. So, it is not well-defined because there is no common characteristics. Let's have this exercise. Which of the following sets is a well-defined set? Explain your answer. The set of all small numbers, the set of all multiples of 10, the set of good writers, or the set of nice students in your class. So let's discuss one by one. The set of all small numbers. Small here is not defined because we cannot think of an element of this set na specific. For example, we cannot say that zero is a small number 
because we do have negative numbers which are smaller than zero. Another example is that 1 million, hindi natin masasabi na maliit siya kasi meron pang mas malaki doon sa, ma sa number na yon sa 1 million. Next, so this one is not well defined. The set of all multiples of 10. Itong set na to, makakapag-isip ka ba ng mga elements nito? Of course, yes. 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. So, ibig sabihin, itong set na to is a well-defined set. Next, the set of good writers, the set of nice students in your class is the same with the first example natin dito. Okay? So, these two are not well-defined because good writers, nice students are not specific. Okay? So, the only well-defined set here is the set of all multiples of 10. Now, let's have elements. The objects contained in a set are called its elements or members. So, we're going to use this symbol to indicate an element of a set. And in sets, we use capital letters to denote sets. And we're going to use lowercase letters to denote elements. Okay? And in most cases, elements are enclosed by braces. So, this symbol. Okay? And if a set has no element, then it is an empty set. Or other authors, they call it null set. Okay? And we use this symbol, the braces itself, and this symbol to indicate that an element is, uh, that that set is an empty set or null set. Now, the notation, let's say for example, 9, the symbol B. This means that 9 is an element of B. Also to cut, use the symbol D, meaning cut is an element of D or cat is a member of set D. Likewise, if we want to indicate an element which is not really an element of a given set, then we use the symbol, this symbol. Okay, so there is slash forward for the symbol for elements. Dog is not an element of A, then we have to use again this one to indicate that dog is not a member of the set A. Cardinality. So, the cardinality of a set is the number of elements in the set. So, it is denoted by this N of S. Then, yung letter na ginamit dun sa S, ito yung lalagay natin. For example, consider the set D, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 12. So, we just have to count the number of elements in the set D to find for the cardinality. And since meron tayong 7 elements in the given given set, then the cardinality of that set, which is D, is 7. Now, how about for this set, E? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. So, this set is what we call an infinite set, and it has an infinite number of elements. So, what is the cardinality of this set? So, the cardinality is also infinite. Okay? Next, description of set. So, the first description is what we call the roster or listing method. And we're just listing the element of the set here inside the braces. Okay? But, but you have to take note that the element must be listed only once. Walang mauulit, and the order does not matter. For example, okay, in these sets, we have A, B, C, D. So, makikita ninyo dito, we just listed 
the elements here. Okay? Next, another description is what we call the verbal description method. And it's a method of describing a set in words. The sa roster kanina, or the listing method, we just list the elements. Here in the verbal description, uh, we have to describe the set in words. Now, let's describe the examples in the previous method here. Dito sa uh, roster method natin kanina. Okay, for example, we have to describe this set using verbal description. Then, we must say set A is the set of counting numbers less than 6. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these numbers are less than 6, which actually counting numbers. Next, how about university? U-N-I-V-E-R-S-T-Y. Uh, if you take note, this one, set B is the set of letters in the word university. Okay? Now, uh, take note, kanina, na sinabi natin, each element of a given set must only be listed once. Okay? May naulit kasi dito, dalawang I, so therefore, we only list this once. So, walang I dito, kasi meron ng I kanina. Okay? How about this one, an infinite set? 3, 6, 9, 12. We all know that these are multiples of 3. Positive multiples of 3. So, the verbal description of this is the set C is the set of positive multiples of 3. How about D? 2. Okay, the set P is the set of even prime number. Sorry for the omitted word of there. Next, lastly, we have the set builder notation. It is a formalistic way of describing the elements of a set with rules. Okay, with rules that determine whether an object is an element of the set rather than the actual elements. Okay? So, meron lang tayong rule dyan. For example, using these um, sets again. So, the set builder notation for set A, this one, uh, A equals, then this. So, we, we read this as set of all x such that x is a counting number less than 6. Sorry for this, it must be 6. Okay? x such that x is an element of counting number less than 6. How about b? Set b is equal to all x such that x is a letter in the word university. C x such that x is a positive multiple of 3. After D, x such that x is an even prime number. So, those are the three methods of describing sets. We have the roster or listing method. We have the set builder notation. And we have the verbal description method. Now, let's have these universal sets. A universal set is a set containing all the elements of all related sets without repetition. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng sets or lahat ng elements doon sa set ay nakapaloob ka universal set. So, that is why it's called universal. Okay? So, there are cases where two or more sets contain some but not all of the same elements. So, to ito. Pero lahat ng elements doon sa lahat ng sets ay nakapaloob kay universal set. Next, consider the set of positive odd integers. Okay, positive odd integers. R1 or the set of R equals 1, 3, 5, 7. And the set of counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. What are the elements in set N? Common, common R. Pag sinabi natin common, parehas. Ano yung mga elements na na kay N na parehas kay R? Notice that 1, 
is an element of R which is also an element of N also to 3 to 5 to 7 etc. And there are many more numbers common to both sets. Since all or some of the elements in set R are contained in set N, we say that R is a subset of N. Okay? So since lahat ng elements ni R ay nandito sa elements ni N, then we can say that R is a subset of N. In symbol, we use this to indicate a subset. Okay? So, R is a subset of N. So, isipin lang natin, dapat lahat ng elements ng isang set ay nakapaloob doon sa another set para masabi natin yung set na yun ay subset ng another set. Now, let's have this subset para maintindihan nyo lalo. Set A is a subset of B, that is A, the symbol B, if and only if, take note of this, every element in A, so lahat ng element ng A, ay also element of B. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, mas malawak si B kaysa kay A. Lahat ng elements ni A ay nandun sa elements ni B. Okay, so this is what we call subset. These are the facts. Every set is a subset of itself. So ito. Why? Because every element in a set is contained within itself. So, lahat naman ng nasa set, or lahat naman ng elements na nasa set, ay nasa kanya. Okay, so that's why we call every set is a subset of itself. Another, any set is a subset of the universal set. So, to yan, because all elements in a set are also elements of the universal set. So, natakil na natin kanina yan. Take that, just take note. Okay, lahat ng set ay subset ng universal set. Next, a subset of a given set that is not the self itself. Okay, take note of this. Hindi yung sarili niya ay tinatawag nating proper subset and we use this symbol. Okay, parang subset lang siya kanina. Yung subset lang meron siyang underline. Ito sa proper subset, wala. Okay, example, set C equals 2, 4, 6 and set D is 2, 4, 6, 8. We say that C is a proper subset of D. Okay? Because all elements in A, uh, sorry, in all elements of C rather, which is 2, 4, 6, are also elements of D. At, take note, si D, meron siyang element na hindi matatagpuan or makikita kay C, which is the element A. So, pag ganyan, masasabi natin si C ay proper subset ng D. Okay? Next, consider the set P. This one. Sabi natin kanina, pagka wala siyang laman, we call this as empty set or null set or sometimes called void set. Okay? Because it doesn't have any element. Now, it is impossible, therefore, to find an element in an empty set that is not in a set. So, that is why we come up to a fact na empty set is a subset of every set. Okay? So, meron tayong three facts kanina. Okay? So, ito, empty set is a subset of every set. Every set is a subset of itself. And every set is a subset of the universal set. Okay, the number of subsets in a finite set. So, we have this rule. If n of s equals k. So, take note, n of s is yung cardinality natin. The number of elements in a given set equals a. Okay, then the number of subsets 
in S is 2 raised to K, the number of elements. Yun yung K natin, or what we call the cardinality. Example, how many subsets are there in set M if we have this element, 1, 4, 3? So the cardinality of M is a 3. Then the number of subsets in M is just 2 raised to 3. And if we're going to uh, evaluate this, then we have 8. So there are 8 subsets in set M. Now let's identify those subset, subsets if it is really um, 8. First, empty set. Okay? Uh, ito yung fact natin kanina that every set or every empty set is a subset of every element, or uh, every set. Next, 1. Ito, isa -isa natin. 1, 4, 5. By 2, 1, 4, 1, 5, 4, 5. And lastly, itong buo, kasi sabi natin kanina, every set is a subset of itself. So, 1, 4, 5. Kung bibilangin natin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, there are 8 subsets of set M. And these are its subsets. How many proper subsets does the set M, 1, 4, 5 have? Di ba sabi natin kanina, yung set M, meron tayong 8 subsets. Ilan doon ang proper subset? Nabalikan natin yung proper subset. Ang proper subset kanina ay yung mga subset ng isang, ng isang set na excluded yung sarili niya. Na excluded yung sarili niya. Na, tignan natin dito. Pagka yung set M natin meron siyang 8 subsets. Yung proper subsets, puburahin lang natin yung sarili niya. Ilang proper subset din ang meron dun sa set M? Kung wala ito. So, there are 7 proper subsets. Okay? Note that there are 8 subsets of the set M. The only one that is not a proper subset in the set M is itself. Okay? So, thus, the number of proper subsets set M is equal to the number of subsets minus 1. So, we have this formula. 2K, ito yung number of subsets minus 1 magma-minus 1 tayo kasi exclude natin yung sarili niya. Okay? Sariling uh, elements dun sa given set. Now, how many proper subsets does the set K equals 1, A, 2, B have? Okay, of course, the number of cardinality of K is 4 minus 1 to indicate we are looking for its proper subset. 2 raised to 4 equals 64 minus 1 equals 63. So, set K has 63 proper subsets. Disjoint sets. Two or more sets are disjoint sets if these sets do not have common elements. If we consider A, Bobby, Berto, Bella, Bruce, and set N, Carla, Chito, Charlie, Crane, we say that the sets A and N are disjoint sets kasi wala silang elements na common. Okay? Uh, wala, walang common elements sa dalawang set. Kaya matatawag natin na itong dalawang set na to ay disjoint sets. Next, equivalent sets. Two or more sets are called equivalent sets if and only if they have the same number of elements or cardinality. Okay? So, dapat parehas sila ng number of elements. For example, 1, A, 2, B. These are the elements of set A. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars are the elements of set B. Now, the cardinality of A natin is 4. Because we have four elements, the cardinality of B is also four. Okay? Then we say that set A is equivalent to B. Okay? Because they have the same number of elements. 
That is what we call equivalent sets. Next, equal sets. Two or more sets are called equal sets. We use this symbol if and only if they have the same or exact elements. Doon sa equivalent sets natin kanina, we are just looking to the number of elements. Dito sa equal sets, titignan natin kung magkaparehas sila mismo ng elements. For example, set C equals A, E, E, O, U. And set D, O, U, E, E, A. Or, sorry, binasa ko ano. A, E, I, O, U. And set D, O, U, I, E, A. Kung makita natin, um, parehas sila ng elements. Right? It's just a matter of uh, arrangement or order paglilista ng elements. Since same sila ng elements, then we say that set T is equal to set C. Okay? So, well, that's what we call equal sets. Now, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed watching this.